Just recently, I read in a book about the Silicon Valley investor who talk about his decision-making process and whatnot, right? On some level along the line, he came up with some phrases that we should learn the fundamentals of a topic first and really understand them at the very core, the core concepts rather than knowing some complicated half as techniques, right? So for this video, I want to break down some very fundamentals for the mixing with the goal of simplify mixing and bring a little bit more clarity into this topic, right? Because there are so many tools out there like uh, exciters, uh, saturators, uh, multiband saturators, uh, saturated multiband clipping, clippers, um, what else is there? I don't know. There are so many tools out there for mixing that we possibly could use, right? But if you don't know the very core, most simplest barbaric ways of mixing, we can't even use them in the right uh, way, right? Hey friends, one here from roughinstudio.com. So I need to tell you a little personal story here very quickly. The other day I was playing with my kid in the sandbox and I believe the best ideas come when we have uh, a little bit of brain space, right? So I was digging with the sand, with the shovel in the sandbox. A certain situation popped up into my mind from my audio engineer classes, right? My classmate next to me in mixing classes leaning over to me and said, for mixing there is no, it's really not much, right? There is EQ, some compression, reverbs maybe, and some other effects, right? And then I gave it some thoughts and then I said, his name was Ramon. Yes, I think you're right. So let's connecting the dots here. So talking about the fundamentals and mixing, we can break it down to some core specific tasks and tools, right? And the fundamentals uh, really mean we really break it down to its most barbaric function and naming so we can really understand them and break it down so that our brain really can eat it up very easily, right? So yeah, let's finally get started with some of the fundamentals for mixing. So basically we could divide the mixing tools like compressor, EQ and so on either into two categories, right? So we have the functions, what they are doing, example here, increase or decrease the volume, and we have the purpose for a task, for example, cleaning out, additive tasks like adding vibe and so on, right? So for this video, we are going to focus on both, both of them. Now, before we start, I quickly want to mention my seven step low end checklist. So if you struggle to mix that kick and the bass, a very common problem I found for a lot of producers out there. So I put together a little checklist. It's almost like an ebook. Um, there are lots of tips and uh, tool recommendations, plugin recommendations and so on, techniques. So really use it as a guide for inspiration maybe or as a reference guide whenever you get stuck. You can download it for free of course, just click the link below. So yeah, let's dive in into the four fundamental core things about mixing. Okay, let's first start with the EQ's function. The function of an EQ is basically just boosting or cutting frequencies, right? And that's it. There is nothing more. There is no other purpose for that, for an EQ, right? No, no purpose, but there is another purpose, but there is no other function, right? Rather than just boosting or uh, cutting. Now, let's talk about the purpose of an EQ. Uh, what do we want to achieve if we insert an EQ? So, for example, we can cut out nasty frequencies to make the track more pungier. We can create some space for other instruments, right? Which results in a more transparent mix, right? For example. So at its very core fundamental of an EQ, we either removing or we adding. That's it. That's all what we need to do or what we need to know about an EQ, right? So let's talk about the second fundamental tool, which is, in my opinion, a compressor, right? So what is a compressor? In its most fundamental way, it's an automated volume controller, right? With some additional functions like uh, when should I react, how fast should I react, how deep I should react, aka the ratio, right? And that's it, right? The additional tools that we have on hand, right? That we can even more control over it, right? Those are the function, function, the fundamental functions of a compressor, right? So for example, we can insert it on a pad that is or a synth sound that is popping out here and there in one section so we insert the compressor so it puts down the volume a little bit and decreases the quietest and the loudest part 
which is by the way called dynamic right so we can put it down but that's already a little bit too much right let's talk about the purpose of a compressor so why do we want to insert the compressor again if there is uh, uh, audio sound popping out too much we want an, an automatic way putting down the volume if it hits a certain level right and we can also add vibe if we want to with a certain style of compressor but if we don't know the fundamentals how to think about the compressor that is just a simple volume fader then we have already a harder time to actually get to the more advanced stuff like uh, choosing the right compressor for the right task right one little tip here for knowing when you should insert the compressor so whenever you found yourself yourself reaching for that fader for that volume fader that's a good indicator for inserting a compressor right so for example you always think oh the pad is a little bit too loud let's put it down and then you listen further in the arrangement and on some level you found oh where is the pad again it's it's too quiet now then you bring that volume fader up again that's a good indicator that uh, you probably should insert a compressor on that specific audio source right because then uh, you can decrease the dynamic of that uh, certain sound and it is more stable inside the mix, right? The next thing is reverb and delays. So especially for the reverb, the most fundamental thing is really do we want to make a sound closer or further away from us? That's it. Most fundamental thing. Not clo closer, closer or further back, right? Further all the way back and as a little example here i like to think about a certain situation like i would sit in the crowd and watching the band playing right and then i can say i want uh, i can basically choose with the reverb who should be in the front right who should be the front singer who should be the the front man basically right and we can do that with uh, simple tools like reverb or delays if you want just think about at its most fundamental thing closer or further away from us from the listener right that's it nothing more purpose again if you want we can have different flavors different um, rooms big small whatever it is but it's core at its fundamental stage it's really how far how close we want it right and we can choose that with the reverb now the fourth thing is really some additional effects like i mentioned before limiter maybe clippers uh, chorus some modulation effects like chorus um, resonators what there are so many tools right and very often they are more like creative effects right so we use them more for sound design a lot of time right okay a limiter maybe not right but other stuff like chorus maybe resonator uh, granular effects whatever it is right um, those I like to call them just additional effects, right? And uh, yeah, that's it already. Now let's move over to some uh, audible examples inside Ableton um, to see this in action, especially EQ, compression, and some reverbs. And again, really in a simple and basic way, most fundamental way, and then you can still go further if you like.
have some tools to adding or removing frequencies aka EQs then we have to we have a tool to controlling the volume aka compression then we have a tool to bring a sound closer or further away from the listener aka reverbs and rever <laughs> reverbs and delays and then fourth we have some additional tools like more creative effects um, modulation effects or also some technical effects like a limiter a clipper and so on to serve a certain purpose right to increase or level up the tracks uh, loudness so yeah that's it now if you just can really understand those simple fundamental concepts and apply them in its most fundamental ways you already can improve the mixing quality of your tracks right really simple later on you can maybe dive deeper into different topics like what eqs are out there which frequencies should i increase or decrease to achieve a certain result what compressor should i use are there more than one type of compressors there are by the way and which one should I use for what purpose and so on, right? But again, keep it simple and then it will come out naturally that you probably want to learn more about uh, different topics and dive deeper into the different uh, nerdy stuff, right? But again, you can really achieve a great sounding mix just with EQ, reverbs and some compression, really. If you know what you're doing, just use the stock plugins from Ableton and you can really tackle a lot of problems and get a powerful transparent punchy mix right now again if you need some help with mixing the low end the kick and the bass um, i recommend downloading the seven step low end checklist that i link below this video thanks again for watching thanks again for your time i hope it helps a little bit and brings some clarity to you and uh, hope to see you next week cheers